In Creole Parametric Manufacturing Mode, you set up work cells to represent the different machines that you have in your shop for manufacturing your different parts. And I've got this model for this Integrix 200SY mill turn machine from Mazak. And let's pretend I actually own this and I want to set this up as a work cell. So I've got it, the model itself open in Creo Parametric. To make the work cell, I need to have a manufacturing model. So I'll click the new icon and change the model type to manufacturing. Now I'll leave the subtype as NC assembly. And this is just to create the work cell, so I don't care about the name. And I'm going to uncheck use default template just to ensure that I know what set of units that I am working in. And this is good. I happen to have my data for this machine in inches. Let's click the OK button. And I've got my NC manufacturing assembly started. Let's now bring in a fixture. And this is just so I can do something later on. There's a method to my badness. So I've clicked on the fixture icon. Let's go to components and I'm going to assemble. I'm going to grab the Integrix assembly and just going to drop it using the default constraint and hit the check mark. And so that is good. Now, the one really important thing here, after, after I hit the check mark, uh, let me turn off the display of this coordinate system. I have a, another coordinate system in here for my machine zero, and I'm going to use that one later on when I'm setting up my work cell. So to do that, here we have the work center command, and from the drop down list, you can choose whether you're going to do mill, lathe, wire, EDM, bring it open a user to find one. But like I said, this is a mill turn machine. And a mill turn machine is basically a combination of a lathe and a mill. And so with a lathe, you're going to have your workpiece spinning around, but you're also going to have live tooling like a mill. The mill can move around. And in this case, we're going to have five axes of machining. So I'll click on mill turn in order to create my work cell. And here we have the name of the tool over here. And I'm going to call it my Mazak 200SY Integrix. And the type is going to be mill turn. Now for my CNC control, you don't have to fill this in. I'm going to enter in the information that I have. And this is my Mazatrol Fusion 640. CNC control. Here we have the post processor and I happen to know that the post processor for this one which I downloaded from the PTC website is actually going to be UNC L01 and for the ID number I'm going to use value of 11. For the number of axes we're going to change this to 5 and let's see this one if we take a look it actually has two different spindles so we can choose that for two, but it only has one head in here. And by the way, there's a lot of information that you can fill in here. The main thing that's important is the number of axes in here. What you're setting up for this work center is the information to control how this is going to be post-processed. In other words, for generating your cutter location and machine control data files. Let's take a look at some of the other different options because right now I could click OK and I've pretty much got all I need to get started, but there's a lot of stuff you can put in here. Here we have the ability to enable prob probing and this, as the tooltip tells you, enables creation of CMM coordinate measuring machine NC steps. And if you enable this one, you need to have the license of CMM, which I do not. All right, let's take a look at the different tabs that we have in here. First off, we are on the output tab and you can output from commands in your code. And here we have the default choice, do not output. You could do it only at start or let's say that you wanted a from command in your post process data at every sequence you could choose that but I'm going to leave the default of do not output here we have load TL that's short for load tool and the default choice is modal and modal means that it's only going to output the command statements for tool change if necessary if you choose not modal it's going to output the tool statements at every single feature toolpath sequence. And the other choice is not modal on position moves. And that means that the tool will be 
output when you are going to have a change in the z-axis orientation. Then we have a couple uh, controls for the coolant off and spindle off commands. And right now it's going to output them and that means that's going to output these spindle off and coolant off commands at every feature toolpath uh, that's generated. Or you could choose do not output which would only generate those commands at the end of the sequence. Since we have two spindles here we have the ability to control the program zero for the second spindle and you could choose instead of using the main spindle program zero you could do a different program zero per spindle but I'll leave it as the main one. Then we have our cutter compensation here default is tool center you could change that to tool edge and if you change this to tool edge you, you have controls for safe radius and how you want to adjust the corner but I'm going to use the tool center. So this is good for the output tab. Now we have the tools tab and for head one it's set for both milling and turning. If you click on the tools button this allows you to configure the different tools that you're going to use for your machine in here. But you can actually do this uh, at other different steps. So I'm going to exit out of here. You can also specify a tool time that you want for changing between different tools. Unless I wanted to use five seconds for tool time change I can plug in that value. Next up we have our parameters in here and you can specify for example your main and sub spindle their maximum speed and horsepower and I happen to know that's 5000 RPM for both. I don't have the horsepower information that's okay I don't need to specify that and if you happen to know your rapid traverse information you could enter it in different values like feet or inches or millimeters per, per minute or per revolution. Now for our assembly, this is why I brought in this fixture assembly here in, wow, this was what, like Pro Engineer Wildfire 3.0. They added this neat functionality called MKS, which is Machine Kinematic Solution, which is basically taking your tool paths and using them to drive a mechanism in Creo Parametric. And I think they're like disabling support for it starting with Creo Parametric 6.0. I'm still gonna play around with it and try to get it to work. And this is what the assembly tab is used for, uh, that MKS, MKS solution. So in this case, I can open up my machine assembly that I want to use just use in session to grab my assembly and in this way I can specify what coordinate system I'm going to use as the machine zero so I'm going to choose that zero coordinate system that automatically generates an assembly feature and from this drop down list you can choose whether you want the orientation of this machine to be horizontal or if it was going to be vertical I could change to that travel tab here you can specify some values for travel in the x y and z directions there's a total of nine different values that you can enter in here but you don't have to enter all of them so for example let's say that you knew where your program zero was and you wanted to specify the x travel in both directions you can do that but i just know my total value of my x travel and that's 20.87 for this particular machine for the y travel let that's going to be 5.50 and for my Z travel that is going to be a value of 42. All right, now let's go to the cycles tab. This is if you want to add information for hole making cycles and the properties tab. This is where you can add other different comments about your particular machine that you want captured in here for the work center. But I'm happy with all the information that I've plugged in here. I can click the OK button. All right, my work cell has been created. The important step here is to save it out to disk. And when I save it, it's automatically going to be stored in the folder indicated by a config.pro option. If I go to File Options and Configuration Editor, I'm going to scroll down, and there is an option that starts with Pro MF Work Cell DIR, and that's where it outputs the information that you save in here. And that way, if I start off with a new manufacturing model and click the OK button, 
Now, if I want to bring in that predefined work center, I go to the drop down list, and instead of configuring from scratch, I can choose user find work center. And here I have the different ones that I've set up before. Let's select that maze act that I just created and click the open button. And this is stored as a user defined feature, it has that .gph extension. And for this one, I'm just going to click the OK button. And for the coordinate system, let's select that one over there and click OK. And now we have our work center located in our manufacturing model to use over and over again. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.